Hey friends, this is Quest and Current, and what I have here today is a cable that I found on AliExpress the last time I browsed through for interesting USB-C stuff, and the cable itself claims to be a 10 amp USB cable, so they, they even boldly directly printed it onto the connector itself, and the funny thing is that the USB standard, the USB-C standard, does not feature a 10 amp version. It can either do 3 amps or 5 amps, and the 5 amp variance is only after power delivery, ne delivery negotiations where the device you're connecting the cable with to the charger actually needs to um, negotiate with the charger what's the highest voltage and the highest current it can do, as well as the cable itself. So it has to ask the cable, hey, what kind of cable are you? And the cable is then going to answer, hey, I'm this kind of cable, this vendor, I can this handle this amount of current in, in this, at this voltage. And there is no, no option to actually tell the device that it can do 10 amps. So I'm really curious on what this cable is going to show on, on the tester itself. But let's unpack it first and, and take a look. So on first glance, it, it feels like all the other USB-C cables I have. It's not even thicker. It's maybe by a bit, but not that much. It's kind of flexible though, so the, the material itself seems to be a bit more high-end than the regular PVC cables that, that I have laying around here. And let's take a look, it's, I would say, almost almost one meter in length. Um, if I do quarters, then yeah, that, 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 that could be 25 centimeters. So, it's probably a one meter cable. And if we take a look at the connector, that's really interesting. The connector on the inside seems to have a red, reddish plastic molding. So they do actually want to indicate that this is a 10 amp connector, even though there formally is no 10 amp connector or in any way an option to transmit 10 amps over the cable. So now I'm curious on, on what the cable is actually going to show us because if they, they've implemented their own version of the USB power delivery standard to indicate something like um, a current of more than 5 amps, that could get quite interesting quite quickly because then definitely others are going to do the same and, and try to, to mimic the behavior of this. And, oh, that's a good start. Okay. The connector itself hmm, feels weird to plug in, so it's, it's really difficult to plug it in. and. <laughs> there you go. It doesn't actually communicate over USB power delivery standard at all. So it just advertises itself or doesn't advertise itself at all. It, it just comes out as a 15 watt cable, which theoretically can do 60 watts if you use the 20 volts range that can be done without the denegotiations. The cable health itself is at 100% and it's a USB 2 cable, so at 400. 80 megabits per second, that's definitely USB 2. Yes, it is. So, 5, five volts, uh, nominally it could do 20 theoretically and everything from 0 0.5 to 3 amps. And if you take a look at the pinout, yes, it's, it's definitely just the cheapest uh, USB cable that you can manufacture, where you have ground and VBUS connected, as well as the D plus and D minus for the USB 2 connection, and one of the CC pins, so in this case, it's the CC2 pin, and if we turn around the connector, it would be the CC1 pin because the connector itself is uh, reversible, depending on how you flip it. And if we take it the, the look at the pins themselves, there they isn't even any shield connected. So the shield itself um, is not non-existent. And if you actually want to transmit data with this cable, then practically speaking, any device that's near it, that can interfere with it, will interfere with it, and, and will uh, actually limit your, your trans transmission rate to something below the 480 megabits if, if you're unlucky. And if we take a look at the VBUS resistance, then again, that's not too bad, but it's also not too good. It's uh, 100 milliohms, and this means that at a 10 amp um, power rating, if you actually want to transmit 10 amps over it, this would mean that the, the voltage drop is almost one volt over the cable length itself. So if you're starting at 5 or 5.25 volts, which uh, normal 
uh, charges put out without any negotiations, it will come out at a 4 volt or 4 point something volts range and your device that, that you actually want to use with it will definitely not charge at the 10 amps range because they, they generally limit the power consumption <coughs> once they see the voltage dropping too much because they actually assume that something is weird and something is funky and they, they want to stay safe and they, they don't want to, to burn the cable itself and, and break anything. And yeah, like I said, there is no e marker inside, so there cannot be any kind of USB power delivery negotiations. It, it cannot talk to the cable itself. The cable itself is just a passive um, thing where you have copper from one end to the other end, and then the device is going to start to draw current. So even though the cable itself says that it's, that it's 10 amps, it practically doesn't feature anything to, to support this. I, could theoretically run 10 amps through it. it, it would just get hot probably, or warm at least, and <coughs> the voltage on the on the output side would definitely drop by a lot. And this means that they can claim that it can handle 10 amps, they can print 10 amps on the connector itself, but practically speaking, that's just a regular USB-C cable and can handle 3 amps max. So with this, uh, if you have any questions, just put them in the comments below. Th thanks for watching and we'll see each other next week.